So during the events of 2020, when all of us who were able to were holed up in our homes and avoiding human contact, we chose to cope with that in different ways. Some of us watched Contagion on Netflix 15 different times. A lot of us tried a sourdough starter and then never tried it again. I turned to Hometown. I had been watching Hometown kind of on and off before, but during 2020, I really got into it. It became my comfort show. It set in motion the events of this video. If you're not familiar, Hometown is on HGTV. It features the married couple Ben and Aaron who live in Laurel, Mississippi, population around 15,000. Aaron went to art school. She holds an art degree. Ben is a carpenter and youth pastor. HGTV approaches them and says, hey, We've got an idea for a show. We've done this formula, kind of, and it's been pretty successful. What if you just find the houses in your small town that need a little bit of love? You revive them for a homeowner, and then that can help people stay in the town and then inspire people to move in. And that sounds great to me. If you Google small town dying, you will be flooded with Google results from every small town in America where young people are leaving and never coming back, jobs aren't being filled, industries are leaving. It's pretty bleak. So I quite like the idea of repairing what's there and trying to entice people to either stay or move back. I think that's really sweet. The more I watched it, the more I liked it. One of the things that I have found so frustrating with a lot of renovation shows, especially on HGTV, is that they like to throw out perfectly good items in favor of new ones. I've seen them destroy really nice cabinets that probably just needed a refinish or a fresh coat of paint. I've seen them tear up hardwood floors that were burgundy instead of the sad gray that everyone seems to want these days. Ben and Aaron are one of the few who are different in that they like to use what's already there. They don't really knock down walls a whole lot. They'll do like a cased opening and they like to see what they can reuse, refinish, and give a bit of new life to. I think that's really nice and it's enjoyable to watch. And the more I watched it, the more I wanted to visit the small town of Laurel and it seems I'm not alone in this. Both the population and tourism has significantly spiked, and now there are a lot of businesses catering to tourists in general. Erin has since opened two businesses, with one more on the way, we'll get to that in a bit, the Laurel Mercantile, where local and statewide craftspeople can sell their wares, and recently, the Scent Library where Erin sells candles based on certain scents that are personal to her. And also there's the Scotsman Trades Co. where Ben does his carpentry. That's now a store also. And a lot of businesses have responded in kind. Basically, I hear all this and think, okay, come on, Maggie. This is a little silly. You don't need to go to Laurel. You're going based on a show and it's a small town. Come on. But I'm from the Midwest and I love small towns. My dad grew up in one and living in the state that I do, I can tell you that there are a lot of small town gems. Hutchinson, Kansas immediately comes to mind. If you love space, then you need to go there immediately. You will be amazed at what the cosmosphere has in the middle of Kansas. It's incredible. That's just one example. There are several more. So I set out to research, how does one get to Laurel? And I think I figured out a way that might be easiest for most people. You all can get back to me. So I was already planning on going to New Orleans in November. And did you know that the Amtrak Crescent Line that goes from New Orleans all the way to New York City makes a stop in Laurel. Seemed like it was meant to be. It takes about three hours to get there on the Amtrak Crescent Line. So I checked to make sure that I could buy a ticket and I committed to going to Laurel for one day and one night. Let's see how that turned out. So the Crescent Line goes through Laurel once and then comes back the other way once also. You sort of are up to the mercy of the Amtrak schedule. My ticket, I purchased coach and it ended up being $72, $36 both ways. My train took off for Laurel at 9.15 a.m. and arrived at 12.18 p.m. Amtrak does suggest getting there about half an hour early and given my previous experience with their trains, I took no chances and instead took their advice. You'll arrive at the Union Passenger Terminal in New Orleans and you can take the Orange Line Transit to get there. 
and it's pretty convenient. You can even download the mobile app. I think at one point the purple line was running there too. I don't know if it still is, but suffice it to say transit there is pretty straightforward. When I got there, they had decorated for the holidays and it was adorable. There are restrooms, water fountains, and vending machines, so if you need to grab a snack, take a break, you are free to do so. Staff will call you to the front when it's time to board, and you, and from my understanding, there are two options. You can get the sleeper car or you can stay in coach. I stayed in coach, but that's just because I'm cheap. But it ended up being the cleanest Amtrak train I've ever been on. My seat was pretty large and comfortable. I had a window, a curtain, an outlet, a place to rest my feet, and a tray table. There was storage overhead for my duffel bag, and my feet had plenty of space to move around. There was a little snack stand where you could purchase chips, cookies, candy bars, sodas, and coffee. I ended up getting a coffee towards the end because something about train rides just makes me really sleepy. There is Wi-Fi on the Amtrak, but it's kind of spotty. You may end up having to use LTE. And the ride there was really pretty. We passed through the Delta and some of the most beautiful forests I've seen in a while. Even though it was November, everything was still really green. That must be a thing in the south. I forget that even though it's winter, not everything is dying in every part of America. And then departing, once we arrived at the train station, that was pretty easy too. Communication was very clear, and from there, I got my duffel and made my way to my Airbnb. So Laurel actually does have a few hotel options. There's the Hampton Inn and Suites, for example. That's about a 20 minute walk outside of downtown. Again, I will get to this in a bit, but there are plans to add a downtown hotel. But for now, an Airbnb in the heart of downtown is probably your best bet. There are other homes in the neighborhoods that have been converted into Airbnbs, but I wouldn't suggest those because it's a bit of a walk and if you're familiar familiar with small towns at all, you know that there is no rideshare and no public transit. It's just how it is. There's 15,000 people. What would they, what, why, why would you do that? Especially because the downtown area is pretty walkable. I really don't see a point. So I chose an Airbnb at Sweet Something's Bakery. When I got there, it was too early for a check-in, so I did just drop my duffel off and went exploring. The first thing I did was go to the Laurel Mercantile obviously, and it was really cute. It's a small building that's packed with a lot of neat stuff, and when I got there, they were doing their Christmas sale. Music to my ears. I love not paying full price for things. I did pick up a few really cute items that I felt were reasonably priced and pretty adorable. Next, I walked over to the Scotsman Trade Co. They have part of the area where Ben and his friends do their woodworking sectioned off, so you can still look into it and see all the tools and everything, which is pretty neat. They sell a few other things, some cutting boards, for example. Those were a big feature. I also visited the Scent Library, and can we just talk about how adorable the aesthetic is here? I think overall this is my favorite themed shop of all of Laurel's various outlets. It's so cute, and it was just really fun to walk around smelling things. I'm not a candle person. I wish I could be because a lot of these smelled really awesome. I ended up getting a late lunch at Lee's coffee and tea. It was really good food. Supposedly their pastrami is legendary. So after a couple hours, it was time for me to check in, and this place is darling. There are four units total, and I stayed at the one with the balcony option, and it's really sweet. You could probably, probably fit a family in here. There are two queen size beds, really nice bathroom, and everything was pretty well supplied. You do have a little kitchen in case you wanna cook breakfast or anything, and a family room with a fireplace and a TV. And in case you're wondering, yes, in the morning, the smells from the bakery do waft up into your loft, it's lovely. And also, since you're staying in the Airbnb, you get to pick one free pastry and one free drink with your breakfast. I chose a white chocolate raspberry scone, had it heated up, and I am still dreaming about it to this day. The next morning, I knew my train left at 5.16 p.m. So I had basically a whole day to try a new restaurant, continue looking through other different stores, which I did, and see what there is tour-wise. What I ended up doing was DJ Bolton's home tours. The first one of Saturday was at 10 in the morning, and it was just me and one other person. It was great. DJ is so much fun. He really loves showing you the town. He knows so much about which 
house was renovated on which episode of Hometown. He'll take you through, just basically give you an overview of the entire town. I think it's a great option if you can do that right when you get there. I would highly suggest it. He really loves his job. He'll take you to all of the iconic sites, let you get a picture with them. So we went to the Scotsman, we went to the Mercantile, we drove a bit further out to go to the Bird Dog, and drove through all of the pretty streets and neighborhoods. After my tour, I spent a couple hours going through the rest of the antique shops. The rusty chandelier is super fun, and you can lose an entire afternoon there if you're not careful. There are also a few other cute little touristy shops that sell laurel-themed merchandise that I really enjoyed. And then lunch happened and I know a lot of you are gonna ask Maggie, did you go to Pearl's Diner? And I did not. And I'm sorry about that. Instead I went to La Fleur and it's really cute. It's a New Orleans themed cafe. I had their beignets also and they are the stickiest, sweetest beignets I've had in a while. I also went to the Lauren Rogers Art Museum and I was pleasantly surprised. I really love visiting small town museums because you just never know what you're gonna find. The art museum is free to enter and they have millions of dollars in artwork in that little museum including a John Singer Sargent in Laurel, Mississippi. Oh my goodness. So I spent an hour there and then continued walking to a few other antique shops that I really enjoyed. And I also made a pit stop in the Bird Dog Cafe, which was featured on Hometown and is just as cute as I remember. It's like part antique shop, part cafe, and they have a pretty good variety of teas. And I love teas. So I got one. And I chilled there for a bit. It was overcast the entire time I was there, and at that point it had started raining really bad, so I was mostly seeking shelter, but I did really enjoy it. Side note, this place goes hardcore for the holidays. It was just a couple of days after Thanksgiving while I was there, but the town had already decorated from head to toe. There was this little section of town that was honestly one of my favorites, but basically every town business in Laurel sponsors a Christmas tree. Some of them go hardcore. A lot of the decorations are kind of on theme for the business. Maybe there's toothpaste ornaments for the dental practice or um, whatever this is. Also, shout out to the financial business who just went completely in the opposite direction and decided to embrace dinosaurs as their theme. I thought that was fantastic. I must have spent at least half an hour walking through that. I just love seeing how small towns embrace the holidays and it just makes me wonder, like, what do you all do for the other major seasons? Fourth of July, Arbor Day. I'd love to know. So like I said, there are plans for a downtown hotel, and Ben and Aaron are supposedly right on it, but it won't be ready for a couple of years. If you want a downtown hotel experience, you might want to hold off on visiting Laurel then. So when all is said and done, it was time for me to make my way back to the Laurel train station and it was pouring at this point. It was about a seven minute walk from my Airbnb to the train station and my duffel was starting to hurt my shoulders, so thank goodness it was a short walk. This is just so small town, but look at this little waiting area. It doesn't even have a vending machine. It's just so bare minimum, and that just <laughs> made me smile. You've got two restrooms and a water fountain. Like, what more do you need? The train ended up being delayed, but once we were on it, I don't know, did they break the law of physics, drive it like they stole it? Because we got to New Orleans an hour before we were supposed to. We were supposed to get there at 9, 10 p.m. We got there at 8. Yeah, props to the staff. It was excellent. Overall, I think if you're going to go to Laurel, you should spend the night. Something I've noticed as I've been traveling to smaller towns is that they do really rely on tourism, people spending the night. And this is evidence in more popular tourist destinations. Venice is a good example. A lot of people will just hop off on a cruise ship, meaning a lot of their tourism dollars don't go into the city. So if you're going to take the time, I would just spend the night. Sweet Something's Airbnb was really cute. I thought it was reasonably priced. And I got a free pastry. 10 out of 10. And I think one, you know, a night is a good enough time to see all there is to see and get a good feel for the town. I never felt rushed. I had a lot of 
free time to meander through shops, and I ended up spending a lot of money, adding my tourism dollars into Laurel, I guess. If you are interested at all in hometown, I do think it's fun to visit, and I do think it's nice that they're working so hard to make their small town viable. I know it's an imperfect system. A lot of people have pointed out that when you renovate these homes on television, it just makes people want to buy them to turn them into an Airbnb. But I do think having the downtown hotel whenever that will be ready will kind of help alleviate those issues. So there's a lot of thought that goes into it. And no, I didn't meet Ben and Aaron. I probably should have put that at the beginning of the video, but they're busy people. I was hearing about all the projects that they had going on and I just, I don't think they sleep ever. Everyone was really friendly. I had a good time. I'd go back again. I'd like to go in a couple of years once I've kind of added a few more things, and I'd like to eat at Pearl's Diner. I feel like I made a faux pas by not going there. But anyways, folks, that is how you can get from New Orleans to Laurel and back again. If that sounds feasible, would highly suggest. And if you have any other ideas, maybe ways that you could also get to Laurel that might be a bit easier, maybe lesser known, I would love to hear them. And thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.